Hello there. I'm continuing my look at some of the more complex Sauvignon Blancs around. And here's another New Zealand wine. This is Ray Wacky's Wild Sauvignon. It's a Marlborough Sauvignon Blanc from 2022. So Grey Wacky is a, a winery started in 2009 by somebody called Kevin Judd. Now Kevin Judd was the first winemaker at Cloudy Bay. Cloudy Bay, not the first, but one of the most influential early wineries established in Marlborough producing Sauvignon Blanc. And Judd came the winemaker there in 1984, pretty much before they started, and was winemaker there for 25 years before he left to set up his own business. Grey Wacky, is a common stone found particularly in the Rapa Ura district, which is where Grey Wacky's first vineyard were located. And fruit from, for this wine is sourced from various Southern Valleys vineyards. And they tend to be those where there is more of the Grey Wacky and less of the older, compact, clay loam soils that proliferate otherwise. And these sites are, are located in Rapa Ura, Woodburn and Renwick. So very much concentrating on the older original region of Sauvignon Blanc producing in Marlborough. They also mentioned that a high proportion of the vineyards used to make this wine are trained to a system called Scott Henry. And Scott Henry is, is a more expensive training system to use because it involves more work because you're actually trying to get the, the vine to produce a canopy, two canopies in fact, one going up and one coming down thus increasing the foliage area and devigorating the vine, hopefully giving better sunlight and inception and better fruit brightness. The remaining vineyards were all trained to one or two cane vertical shoot positioning, which is a much more I think, common training system these days. Now, some of the fruit that went into this was machine harvested, some was machine harvested, some was hand-picked. So it tended to be that the machine harvested fruit was, was harvested at night when it was cool, and thus the speed of picking helped to ensure the fruit was all in good condition when it reached the winery. And then during the day, there was hand-picking as well, giving much cleaner fruit that hasn't been manipulated. It's probably going to give you cleaner juice. Having spoken about the wine the other day, I should say that this wine is evidently, it's made at the Dog Point Winery. So it's another wine in a similar vein to the Dog Point Section 94. And they're both made in the same place. So anyway, the fruit is gently pressed and it's left to settle overnight. Once the solids have settled to the bottom, the juice is racked off the top of those and is put into barriques, 225 litre barrels, to ferment. So everything ferments in oak and a small proportion of those barrels are new. So the indigenous yeasts are left to conduct the fermentation. About two thirds of the wine undergoes malolactic conversion, so just to soften the acidity a little bit and the yeast lees in the barrels are stirred up to try and add a little bit of richness and rounded structure to the wine's fruit. After malolactic conversion, the wine continues aging in barrel and was removed from barrel just prior to the next harvest. The 2022 season started with a warm, wet spring. There was good flower set and healthy crop levels were achieved. December and January were warm, promoting healthy vineyard growth. And then in February, a cyclone managed to deposit somewhere in the region of 160 millimetres of rain in the vineyards over the periods of three weekends. Fortunately, however, by this stage of the season, it was quite cool and it was quite breezy. So actually the, the disease pressure wasn't as great as if it had been hotter and it would have created greater humidity and the drying winds managed to prevent there being much rot in most of the vineyard. And the Sauvignon Blanc obviously went through really quite quickly as there was further rain forecast. And they wanted to get the, the Sauvignon gathered in before that arrived. So in fact, the team worked. And, and do remember, this was the third of New Zealand's COVID vintages. So there were still people sick and uh, socially distancing. So the team had to work round the clock, both machine harvesting at night and hand picking during the day to get everything in in time. But actually the fruit, because it had had quite a, a long period of ripening, achieved really good flavour in 2022. So let's see what we make of it, shall we? In terms of colour, that's a relatively pale, slightly strawy yellow colour. Swelling it, the wine has 13.5% alcohol. It does eventually throw some tears onto the side of the glass there. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? 
the aromas are quite classically Sauvignon Blanc. There are notes of pea pods, there are notes of passion fruit. There's a grassy hint. There are touches of guava and almost through to sort of mango on, on, back further on the palate. There is a greenness though, there's a hint of green capsicum, but much more of it is pea pods of note, I think. So let's have a taste, shall we? The wine is dry and it's got a crisp, minerally acidity. However, it's not got the sort of the tartness that we saw with the Dog Point section 94. There's a little bit more um, reined in, a little bit more sort of, uh, the fruit is a bit round, more rounded. The 13.5% the, the alcohol here is, is adding a little bit of weight and richness to the palate. Maybe touches of new oak, adding you know hints of vanilla. So the wine has a sort of a medium weight there. And, the, the mineral acidity is not just occurring at the, the front of the mouth, it's also at the back back of the palate there. Lengthwise, you've got some citric, lemon, lime, grapefruit sort of notes coming through there, but also there are, there are sort of the slightly more ripe passion fruit notes that you get with, with Sauvignon Blanc. Having said that, there are also sort of slight saline hints on the finish, and the finish is, is relatively long and really quite clearly defined because of that good acidity. The wine really does have elegance and freshness, but actually I think it's also got a sort of a rounded, pleasing fruitiness. It makes it much easier to get to grips with than the slightly more challenging Dog Point Section 94. I noticed that the aggregated score we have for Grey Wacky Wild Sauvignon is 92, slightly higher than the Dog Point. And I think maybe it's just that it's slightly less of a, an extreme style. I certainly think that the wine's offering value for money. If you've seen the video that I, I, I did talking about Silex from, from France, from the, the Loire Valley, from the Bouli Fumé region, uh, I'd, I'd say this is a wine that has a lot of the characteristics that that had. However, this is almost a tenth of the price. So we're talking about a really well-made, great value for money wine here. So I guess I'm asking you, please don't necessarily turn your nose up at New Zealand Sauvignon Blancs. Many of them are very formulaic, very fruit forward, but there's an increasing number of these wines that have fantastic complexity and really do repay aging. So thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, do please press the like button. I'll leave a link in the notes to the fine page for this wine on Wine Searcher. So you can see pricing, you can see where it's available in your market, and you can look at other attributes that we, we have against the wine in terms of its wine making, its critics reviews, user reviews, and also a price history there. If you have any comments you want to make, please leave those in the in the box below. That would be fantastic to hear your feedback on the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else that relates to that. If you have friends you think would like to see the video, do please feel free to pass it on. And it would be great if, if you're enjoying our videos, if you signed up and subscribed to our channel, so you can set yourself an alert and make sure that you're notified whenever we release a new tasting. So wherever you are, thanks again for watching, and do join us again soon, won't you? Bye for now.